Okay then, ladies and gentlemen. Hello! Today we got lots, that you probably see a lot of PS4 stuff sitting here, and there's a few collector's editions and things sitting around here. Let me set this mouse out of the way here. So, we got quite a few different uh, items here. I got my nice knife to get that beard. Oh yeah, I, always, I trimmed my beard. Uh, Man, it's like every time you see me in face, it's either a giant bush, nothing, or in some kind of between phase of it, ain't it? Let's see, I just can't see any wheel system cells. No problems yet, but the system got really hot after the stream. Um, if you have it in a cubby or something, I would not do that. Um, I've told countless people that with anything I would say during the PS3 360 age to now, don't put them in little cubby holes. Have them on top in big open areas because they produce so much heat. Like, that's probably the number one reason so many people kill their modern consoles is by letting them cook themselves inside cubby holes on entertainment stands. Like, if, um, if I was to show you, like, the top of my entertainment stand, which is just, you know, there's nothing on the top. It's just where all the modern ones and more older consoles were in the cubbyhole areas on my entertainment stand. Anyway, anyway. So, what to dig in? Because we got a lot of different stuff. Limited 1 stuff, Black Friday stuff, some, uh, my second order of pink gorillas. The pink one. Actually, in, um... I figured out why I kept getting confused whether it was Pink Gorilla or Pink Godzilla. Actually, it was originally Pink Godzilla, and then they changed it to avoid any kind of copyright issue, because, you know, Godzilla is a trademark thing. So, that's why they became Pink Gorilla. So, I was like, that's why I kept getting confused, because at one time it was Pink Godzilla. Let's see. Not in my cubby PS4 and Xbone on the top. Good, good. That's very smart, because I, I know so many people that deep-fied 360s that way. But anyway, we got quite a lot of different things. And I got some Walmart pickups, too, so let's get uh, probably one of the odd things that ain't a game at all, but this uh, HD link cable for the PS2 and PS1. It works with the PS1 as well. Uh, what this does is it allows you to use HDMI for PS2 and PS1. So you can play PS1 on PS2 it, into a HDMI device or PS2 in HDMI, but you can always play most PS2 games with a HDMI. There's a few that are a little iffy with it sometimes, but most games will work with a um, uh, this one HDMI cable, if I remember quickly. Or, or maybe I'm just thinking of something else. There. But you, you can bump it up with that. And then, um, but this is supposed to work with capture cards, so I've been meaning to try this out. This was um, $29.99. Yeah, that little plastic cap from the HDMI cable. Um, but this is supposed to work with a capture card. Some of these devices, like this one for the Dreamcast, that does not work with capture cards. Capture cards can't pick up that signal of that um, HDMI cable someone made for the Dreamcast. So that there, I'm hoping to get some use out because there's some PS1 games that don't work very well on PS2. And there's a game I also want to try that's on PS2 that doesn't work when you upgrade the signal to widescreen. Uh, the good old days of Super Nintendo and Genesis will you could stick them in the corner of thick carpet and lush heat <laughs> of hellish heat. Uh, I wish I would have found the x before Black Friday. Oh, the game safe. Oh, yeah, you you could have maybe picked up some Xbox One games, actually. That's that's a possibility, yeah? Um, yeah, it, it's, I do miss the days where you didn't have to be very cautious with your console. Um, that is a bit annoying. Uh, but, anyway, so, some actual games. Let's see. Let's go through this small stack of Switch titles here. So, Super Whale had a limited physical release of Snake Pass. I've heard good and bad things about this game. I heard it's very strange with its physics, but I've also heard it's a good puzzle game. So, I'm not really sure if that's just non-puzzle type people criticizing it 
or if it was generally just kind of eh. Because to be fair, some of these limited games. Let's see. I want to move this so I have a place to put these. But I know some of these limited games. Sometimes they do take advantage of more meh games to be like, oh, there's going to only be two thousand copies. You better buy one. Anyway, see, in the last three Switch games here, all my Black Fridays from the Switch, Kobe All Star, uh, Kobe Star Allies is supposed to be, I think, a full player co op game. Yeah, that was Story 5. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Story 5, and Arms. I've been interested in this game. It's really like a wacky punch out game. So I'm excited to get this pretty cheap. I mean, Story 5 still a bit, but I mean, you know, it's cheaper than 60 bucks. Um, I heard Snake Pass is horrible. Yes, I've heard quite a few people say that the physics is quite meh in it. But like I said, I've also heard some people say it's good, so I don't know, you know. Sometimes I like some B-movie type games, but I don't know what kind of game it is. I've seen gameplay of it, it's just, um, what's that? There's an NES, let's see... Yeah, Snake Waddle. You see, you just, you just literally bought what I was thinking up there. Snake Waddle, yes. Um, it's like a strange three 3D version of that. It's probably the best thing I could compare it to. But, um, yeah, I don't know if Snake Pass is good. Like I said, I've heard a lot of opinionated things about it, So, let's see. Let's go through some Vita things. Now... I'll save this. I do have a collector's edition Vita game here, but let's show off some of the the Japanese version of Hamiku uh, Project F Diva F for the Vita. I got this little like, I think it was like seven dollars. It was from Pink Gorilla, so it being a Japanese version, it's playable on the handheld. And because of the update on the Vita TV, uh, it should be compatible on the Vita TV too. I would imagine. I mean, there's pretty much, like I always say, it's mostly the launch games. Uh, you need a fourth womb to store that all in. Uh, yes, I could use another womb. Um, my collection, as you can see, there is quite, quite a lot of stuff. I mean, look, look at all this shit. This is, this is all um, where my elbow is. <laughs> it's kind of hard to... Uh, um, that's all PS4 right there. As you can see, they're starting to stack on top of each other. Um, I heard you don't check Discord. Yes, uh, Carter told me he will only use uh, Steam Chat, basically, or Twitch. Uh, he doesn't use Discord anymore, he told me. I haven't seen him in it. Now, let's see. If that was for me, that is quick. Remove Discord. Yes, that, that was for... Um, that was for you, Carter. I told uh, Dan that yesterday. Um, so I kickstarted this game here. Now, these are three games. I believe this one has two, and then this one is an alternate universe thing. Now, these these are visual novels. They were something I kickstarted, and originally the physical versions were kickstart only, but then at some point they got a publishing deal to release these. Um, through stores and that, and you can buy these through GameStop, and I'm not sure what stores picked them. Let's see, amazing news, more trains on sale. Uh, let's see, it was for you, then you missed it. Oh yeah, Carter didn't pop in yesterday, that's right. Go, go tell Carter the excellent deal you got, your late Black Friday deal, that's awesome. But, um, apparently most people... <laughs> Apparently most people got these around July, and I wasn't aware of that. So I found out like about mm, two weeks ago, somebody told me that they had actually gotten their Kickstarter reward when uh, Cheap Ass Gamer tweeted out tweets having these on sale. I was like, and I still don't have mine. Someone's like, I got mine in July. I'm like, what? So I found... I went and did some digging. I found out that apparently the last shipment of these games got sent to people who already got their games by accident. And then they had to get more made. And then send those to the people they hadn't fulfilled yet. So, mine got super freaking delayed. It, 
Uh, I would have been pissed if I didn't get those. <laughs> I mean, they could have just refunded me, and obviously I would have been able to buy them from GameStop or something, probably. Um, I don't want to sell Atticus... I don't want to sell Atticus' stream, but I found... Oh, steal... <laughs> I don't want to steal Atticus' stream, but I found Xbox One for uh, $5. Best of year, $5. I think that's quite worth it. There probably is a train sim for the Xbox. Um, yeah, I, I think there is a sim game. There's a few sim games on there. Let's see. Now, what? maybe get some of these, because uh, we got a lot of PS4 games here. So what... Let's show off a few of those before we go to some other goodies here, like this Japanese box that uh, nobody's probably going to weed. So, what do you got here? Let's see, Detroit Become Human was one of my best buy Black Friday's pickups. Dan's been wanting me to play that, so I might try that one out in the future. Uh, Mortal Soul Suspect I got cheap at Walmart used. See, Carter thinks it's worth it. Yeah, I thought it was worth $5. That was, um, that was Aaron that said it wasn't worth $5. I thought it was worth $5. I just don't think it's worth $199. I'm pretty sure I would cut off at 100 for me, as it stands right now with games. See, I have to replay so many pet. Yeah, I'm, I would assume there's a lot of different endings similar to his past games. Gotta walk the cat. Okay. Well, I'll try to talk a lot, Carter. <laughs> Let's see. I'll try to save some of the good stuff here. Let's see. Uh, speaking of some good stuff. So, I got... Act we I actually just streamed this this weekend. I wasn't expecting to be it all the way. So, this is uh, Miyazaki's... Um, basically, it's a point-click game. VR game he made. And the only physical version is only in GameStop. So, um, I don't know if this is a very limited print. Uh, most of GameStop's only games have not ran out as far as I'm aware of. So, I don't know if there's a great chance of it running out. Um, I played it for, like, probably about five hours. So, it was a twenty nine ninety nine game. I think it wasn't too bad. It's definitely one of the bell looking VR games I played on the PS4. See, you talk a lot? No way. All you did yesterday was snow. <laughs> uh, Dan's referring to um, when he got his Xbox One, he had to do a lot of problem solving and uh, get stuff work and testing and that. Um, he went to test streaming on Twitch on it. And uh, I was talking to him for a while, and I think it got to around 11 o'clock, and I started conking out in my chair. And I just woke up, and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Why does everyone say I snore? I don't snore. These myths. You, you making up lies. I don't snore. What lies are you trying to feed me here? Lies. Anyway, let's see. Into the gung, uh, dun, Gungjin. Uh, Gungjin. I think that's how you pronounce it. Gungjin. But whatever. Um, I have a indie box version of this game back when indie box did things. Uh, Special Resolves just did a PS4 version. I got number 1,300. I think there were 2,500 copies of this. So, I've never played one of these. Uh, apparently, Cody of uh, Pink Gorilla actually really likes this game. Uh, his stream last night where he was packing up, because he just did, um, on Friday, he just did the third internet uh, Twitch streaming sale at uh, his store. I got two, I was trying to get three things, but someone beat me to one of the games, so I only got three things. Uh, I only got two things that time, but he talked about the special version they also had that had this thick book that apparently has, like, all the guns and weapons that the game has in it. Uh, that didn't personally interest me, but he, he, uh, he went and got the book, so apparently he really liked it. Uh, let's see. I almost bought the Into the Dungeon game. It's really good. Yeah, I remember when I got the Indie Box version, which actually still has a PS4 code, if you remember correctly. It came with a PS4 code. Um, so if you don't actually have that on PS4, I might give that to you. But um, 
I was gonna say um yeah I I've heard good things about it. I hear it's kind of like a kind of um smash TV meets Isaac binding kind of thing I I've never personally played it or really watched anyone play it so um I I don't know if it's online no I don't think it's online but it does say it's two play or so you can probably do a share play with that. Let's see. What else? Uh, limited one games, late shift. Uh, this looks like it's a um, a um, full motion video type game. It has a lot of real people scenes. So um, I don't know anything about this game. I like some full motion video games. Some I don't. Kind of wishy washy. The last one I played, um, what was what was it called? Had a guy who was like chunk trapped in a bunker that's what it's called it was called it was just called bunker um it was about a guy and his well he was a kid well actually he was born in the bunker actually if i remember quickly but it's about a guy who spent his whole life in a bunker after a nuke apparently went off and you find out what happened to most of the people in the bunker because him and his mother at the beginning are the only people alive in the bunker Let's see, twin stick shooter, very hard. Yeah, see, that's why I say it's kind of Smash TV, because Smash TV to me is always the thing I lean on to with that kind of twin stick shooter type thing. Having one stick with moving and the other stick being the way you're aiming and shooting. Uh, not online. That's what it seems. Let's see, let's see. And then another Black Friday from Best Buy, Soul Calibur. So I'm very excited to get hold of this after they announced 2B was going to be a character in it. I was like, yep, I don't even care if that's paid for DLC. I will buy that. <laughs> I love New Automata. Let's get on that. That'll be good. That'll be good. Let's see. What's some other stuff? I did get Zone of the Endors, the second one on Mars, which comes with VR. Now, I'm not sure if the VR is the normal game compatible in VR or like a unique mission or something. I'm not really sure what the VR mode is, but um, that was on sale for Black Friday at GameStop. I think it was on sale at most play, uh, places. <laughs> See, I hope I missed up Fallout 76. Sadly, you did not. <laughs> Sadly, you did not. That uh, That is going to be somewhere in here. It's somewhere in this mess. Actually, uh, yeah, it's right here. It's right there. <laughs> so, we haven't missed that. And since Carter just came back, let's bring that out now. So, this is the Walmart Black Friday Fallout 76, which is a steel case that comes with a, um, you can see in the corner there, a controller skin for your PlayStation controller right there. Yes, Dragon Quest Builders is hiding in there right now. But, yeah. Um, $39.99. If I wasn't somebody who did videos, this wasn't really worth buying at all. Uh, I have been playing it for a while. On and off. Pretty, pretty boring game. It's... It's like, how could you make a game worse than Destiny already was? I mean, it's a it's a very MMO light style game. Let's see, steel case, uh, yeah. steel case for a cardboard fake CD. Um, the actually um, the uh, console versions of Fallout 76 did come with a CD. Now it's basically pointless because the 1.02 update basically replaced like the majority of the game's files. So essentially, you install the disc and then it basically re-downloads the whole new version of the game, which from what I hear from people who played the beta, didn't really do anything. So it's kind of like, what was the point of a 60 gigabyte download? But the big difference though, Dan... I, I'm going to make a video about both of those. I already did on Blood Corps. But to talk about those two against it. Those two had interesting ideas. And in the case of Metal Gear Survival. Didn't look like outdated garbage. No matter how, how much everyone really hates the storyline. Because it 
Willie has nothing to do with Metal Gear. Um, it obviously does not look like a two-generation-old game. Now, well, Corpse did look really bad for a PS4 game. It looked terrible. Looked terrible. But, um, at least Umbrella Corpse was a very strange B-movie. Like, seriously, the multiplayer is like playing a B-movie. It's so strange. But, um, yeah, Fallout 76, there was nothing fun to me in that. As somebody who likes survival games, it's pretty meh. And Umbrella Corpse... A Blood Corpse was probably one of the most bizarre third-person shooters I played for years, so it had that going for it. It had weird physics and stuff, and just everything looked hilarious. B-movie game. Fallout 76 does not have B-movie game going for it. It does not. Not in my opinion. I've seen some funny footage of bugs and that, but I most I've got is the game crashing. Actually, I played a little bit of it today to just um, do a little grinding because I'm trying to get a level or two here and there on that uh, for the next session of it I do. And I literally had the game crash on me four times. One of which, well, three of them were blue screen back to the main menu with the arrow, and one time actually shut off the entire PS4. It didn't even blue screen. Like, the whole PS4 shut off. I was like, what in the hell? I've never seen that before. Good job. Also, Carter, um, you might know something about this. I heard the Scorch and the Dragon thing were actually unused models from Skywim. Is that true? I've only heard about that today. Is that true? I know you, you're big in those, so you probably know that. Anyway, moving on, moving on. Too much landing. So, Thumple, this is supposed to be, um, it doesn't get any screenshots in the back. This is supposed to be, um, a strange, like, game where you're, like, on a track and you have to move around avoiding stuff, I believe. Um, it does have a VR mode, but it's not a mandatory to play it in VR. That's an option. I don't know if I'll be able to play that. Todd! Damn it, Todd! You gave us cheap bags, broken helmets, and broken dreams! Let's see, even your PS4 said, don't play this game. Yeah, even the hooks in the code are copy-pasted Skywim Dragon. Yeah, I heard that today. I was like, you, you're telling me you took unused enemies from a different franchise. I mean, they own it, but from a different franchise that takes place in a totally different time period setting and put them in Fallout 70, like... That, like, on top of the fact that they whipped off Fallout 4's code to make this, they took enemy, the main enemy and boss from another game. Like, that's really bizarre. Very strange. Let's see. Let's get some more of these Black Friday things. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I've heard very good things about this. The only few negative things I've heard is that it has very easy buttons. Like, if you like doing complicated combos and that, uh, like a lot of Fighter games, this apparently has very simple button presses to do complicated things. Then, on top of that, I also got Street Fighter Five Arcade Edition that's supposed to have the story mode that the game, the vanilla version of the game, originally didn't launch with. Now, I think this was, I think this was 10, this was 15, I believe, if I remember correctly. Let's see, Fighter Z is eh. It looks good. I've watched some gameplay. It looks very good. Um, it's definitely more like the older fighting games, visually, than, like, the Bukai series. I, I didn't really like the Bukai series. I mean, it wasn't, like, terrible, but it wasn't, like, it wouldn't be, like, what I thought would be a great, the great epic fight, one-on-one -on -one fight or anything. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't played... The last Street Fighter I must have played was that 
3D one on the PS2, the first time it ever went to 3D. I think it was Street Fighter EX3 Edition? Not Street Fighter Export here. I think that's what it was called. It was the very first Street Fighter in 3D. Uh, it was considered very bad. Not a lot of people like that. That was probably the last Street Fighter game I played in a long time. Uh, definitely looks good, but the gameplay is boring. Uh, like I said, I, I've heard it has easy button presses, so... Yeah, I heard it does not have complicated button presses to let casual people play it in. Let's see... Now this was from Strictly Limited Games. Stardust, Stardust Galaxy Warriors. I believe this is a shmup bullet hell type game. Yeah, it looks like more of a shmup game with... Looks like a type of skill tree system. Uh, this is number 1,259 of Strictly Limited from Germany. I believe they're located in Germany. I know they're overseas. The shipping's just out. Let's see. Let's take a break on some of the PS4 and show off a few other goodies that are on PS4. So, some other the stuff I got from the... XXX, Square, 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 Circle, Circle, X, uh, Circle, Circle, Square, Circle. <laughs> uh, some of the other stuff I got from Pink Gorilla. Solomon's Key. I've never owned a physical copy of Solomon's Key. I have played this when I was a child. This is a sadistic puzzle game. <laughs> At least I remember it being a sadistic puzzle game. Maybe, maybe my memories of it are just a little murky from being a child. And something I was really glad of getting from Pink Gorilla from the last sale was Forever Kingdom. Now, Forever Kingdom, this was published by Arctic, which Arctic published a number of niche RPGs along with Atlas during the PS1 and early PS2 age. Now, Forever Kingdom is a FromSoft game that is a sequel to, um, what was it... It was Evil something. It was Evil something. What was... It's not Evermore. That's Squire Enix game on the Super Nintendo. It was Evil something. What? I can't remember, but... It's a sequel to that game. Two of those characters reappear in this game. Um, it had a very delightful setting. I have that game, which actually that's one of the games I want to try with that PS2 cable. Because um, when you do it in the widescreen mode, it, when it ever does a cutscene, it, like everything just shakes during the cutscene. The gameplay is fine, but story cutscene stuff, it just goes all over the place. It's like... Uh, so I'm hoping that actually, because I've been wanting to play that. I played, that was like my third PS2 game. And I've always wanted to replay that ever since um, I became really big in the Souls games. Because I've like, you know, you know, a lot of the elements in that game really reminds me of a lot of the gear in that. So I was happy to get this. I've been looking for a good copy of this. It is pristine, has everything. Very good. Let's see. Okay, Carter. Ever soft? Ever no, no, those on it. I'll see you later, Carter. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, yes, you will. You will see this on the main channel. It will be, and I I got a lot of stuff I need to do reviews. I've been doing. I've been trying to catch up on a lot of stream stuff. That's uh why I decided not to stream gameplay today. I'm going to set a few hours aside and try to get some work on some reviews. There's a few different ideas I wanted to try out anyway. Uh, but you're okay, Carter. I'll see you later. The video will be on the main channel probably in a week or something. Oh. Those internal hiccups I get. Uh, well, at least it's better than belching. <laughs> but, um... Anyway, um... But yeah, I'm very happy to get that. I've been looking for a good copy of that. The last time I saw a copy, it looked so trashy. Then, let's see. Let's just go ahead and finish off the Pink Will stuff. So, this is a Tales of spinoff for the Tales of series by Namco. Which, Carter is actually... Let's see. Or Snorty. <laughs> Good luck with the views. Uh, with views. See you later. See you later, Carter. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um... 
Yeah, this is a Tales game for the Game Boy Color. Um, I believe it's Tales of Fantasia with some subtitle to it. I can't remember it off the top of my head. I have a number of the Japanese-only uh, Tales of games. Uh, this is a box copy that has its booklet. And uh, it is a little whaley on the sides. It's definitely seen some whale. But it still amazes me how Japanese fans keep a lot of their contents while Japan uh, while, while America gets way of a lot of shit. And this should be the last thing I got from Pink uh, Gorilla. Master of Monsters. Let's see. Neo Generations Master of Monsters. So, I never heard of this. I saw it while they were uh, panning around. They skipped the Sega sound, but I saw it on the corner of my eye. Um, I could, like, only barely see, like, about that much of it. But, um, I called it out to see, and it looks like it's a kind of a tactics game, maybe? It's kind of hard to tell from the back of that. Um, but I can play Japanese sound games, so... I'm not quite sure anything about it, but I think it was like five bucks, so I was like, no, oh, why not? <laughs> now, now, Dan, Dan knows what this PS3 game is. So, um, I had like a special Walmart, um, what was it? Oh yeah, now I remember. Cheap as game or... Cheap ass game or like, um, what was it, about two weeks ago? Uh, there was this clothing line Walmart was doing ads for, and they had a special code where you could get 10 bucks off a purchase of $25, I believe. So I got the, the Mortal Mystery game, another game, and this game, and there was one other thing I bought. I can't remember what the other thing I bought was, but, um,. So I bought a few things. I looked through some of the pre-owned. I bought... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, um... Actually, is that even in here? Crap. I think that's sitting on my stack over there. Crap. Um... Uh, I don't know where it is. Crap. Um, it's a, a VR game where you sit in a taunt and you can spin all the way around and shoot soldiers and cars and stuff. Um, that was only like $19.99 at Walmart. And for some reason, as far as I could tell on the internet, it was only available at Walmart. So, that was, I was like, okay, so I just get a few things. So, I got a few cheap things. So, the Mortal, the Mortal Mystery game, I got Heavenly Guardian for the Wii, which, um, I think it's also on the PS2. This is a spiritual sequel to the, um, Rocky and Paco I think, or is it Pocky and Waco? I think it's Pocky and Waco, actually. Um, if you ever played those on the Super Nintendo, or it's on the Super Nintendo Game Boy Advance. And I want to say there's one more on something else, but I can't remember. But um, that is kind of, um, it's basically a twin stick shooter, basically, with uh, lots of Japanese shit. So, um... This is actually by the people who made that, so this was released as a budget game in America, though. So, let's see, let's put that there on there. Okay, but anyway, the mystery PS3 game, the mystery PS3 game. This is Why to Hell West Retribution, <laughs> which has been removed digitally from every store as far as I'm aware of. So the only way to play this is by either pirating it or get the physical console versions. So if you're not if you're not aware of this game, you should look up um, two best friends. Like they start a new um, they start a new series where it's like what the fuck happened? <laughs> he he did an excellent video on this this atrocity of a game. So this was like four bucks or something at Walmart. So uh, used. So I was like, well, I could give for laughs or some shit. <laughs> This this game is basically the E.T. of the last generation of the PS3 and 360 generation. This is a very terrible game. So, um... Yo, wait, Dennis, that's fine. 
We still got some stuff to show off. We went through a good number of my Black Friday stuff. I still got a lot of the limited edition stuff I haven't showed up. You're fine. I just sent you a message because I know you in a different time zone from me and Dan. So I know, you know, you're you're doing different things than we usually are because you're in a different time zone. So I I just sent you a thing just uh, in case. But, uh, you know, it's... Obviously not the end of the world if you can't make it. You know, we all have wheel lives. We all have wheel lives. Anyway, we went through some of the side stuff. But, yeah, why the hell? Uh, might do a funny stream. I don't know if I'll ever play that all the way through. It's supposed to be really terrible in a buggy hell. So, but, uh, yeah. Welcome to this. Welcome to this. So, we went through some of the Black Friday. I still have a lot of limited one stuff to go through. So, Magic and... Two, this is supposed to be like a wizard twin stick shooter type game or something like Gauntlet. Um, I know this has been out on PC for like a really, really long time, so I'm not very familiar with it myself. But either of those are like um, Absorval. This was no limited one. I think this is supposed to be a story type game. I'm not really familiar i've heard apparently it is well received so that might be something interesting to stream q it's like a strange rainbow limbo we use colors or some crap and i also have an indie box version of this when indie box still did something let's see you got retribution for sick uh for for four bucks could have gone an exp <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, um, I wish I could get Xbox One for five dollars. I would gladly buy that. I would gladly buy that for five dollars if only you would pay for it and I pay you next Tuesday. Wasn't it something like that? I would gladly, I would gladly, I, I can't remember what Wimpy's line with the Bogo thing is. I haven't seen Popeye in like bazillion years. Uh, Kingdom New Lands. I was not aware of this game uh, at all. This is no limited one game. I didn't know anything about it. Um, I tried it uh, the day I got it in the mail because I just wanted to try out something. And um, if you were around when I streamed uh, the first island and a good portion of the second island, uh, I like it. It's pretty interesting. It's um, a management game of resources of your money and getting things done while defending your little encampment as days go by. So, it's kind of a survival game, not a building type survival game, but it's pretty... I'll gladly play you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, yes, I did show those off, and since you specifically actually all aware of them, I'll show them off to you. I think they look exactly like the retail versions, I believe, but yes, uh, I did show those off. I'll show them again here for you. So, I did get those, like I said. Uh, that one has a much darker cover, so there we go. But, uh, if I remember correctly, this one has two, and then this one's one, or it's the other way around, but both of them together, it's three games, so I'm glad to get these finally. I, I freaked out when I heard people got those back in July, and I'm like, oh, good. And you know what's funny is, even though I got an email like a week after I contacted... <sighs> okay. Even though I got an email a week later explaining... What happened? I technically never got a reply on Kickstarter or Twitter about me concerns of my order. So, um, I was probably pretty white in being concerned that they, uh, don't really check their social media anymore. Uh, yes, they look the same. Glad you finally got it. Yes, I'm glad I got it too, because, um, I think that was $80 for me, I think. I think the physical Vita versions was the $80 to you, I think. Have to check Kickstarter to confirm. I think it was $80. Which now, ironically, you can buy them cheap or so. Like I said, um, at the time, it was at least assumed it was only through Kickstarter. So, not that I mind um, them being available in store. I, I, I am always happy of people being able to get something simply... 
without having to deal with fucking scalpels. So I am not mad at though. I was just a little peeved that everyone for months had available for sale, and I'm sitting here. I haven't still got my copy, I, and you know I spent months thinking they just haven't sent the Kickstarter backers to begin with why they were selling them. So anyway, anyway, moving on. Phantom Breakers. Battlegrounds Overdrive. This is supposed to be a beat 'em up game, I believe. And as far as I understand, the PS4 version of this has some unique content in it, I think, that couldn't fit on the Vita or it had to be downloaded or something. I don't remember. I never there was some difference between this and the Vita version. Um, so I bought the PS4 version. I believe it is supposed to be a beat 'em up type game. Then we have. Gundin, Gundinium's, I think I'm pronouncing that one, Gundinium's, uh, this was from Strictly Limited Games, again, I believe they're located in Germany, I got 598, I like how they put numbers on the back, uh, this is a schmump bullet hell type kind of thing I fail so it all work looks okay, that, I, I don't know much about this particular game, so I don't know, uh, something I was really excited getting, um, I think I got it on Friday, but I've been playing it a little, trying it out, was finally, after being known for almost the entirety of Limited One Games' existence, the physical PS4 and Vita versions of Salt and Sanctuary finally got to go up about, I think it was about a month, month or a month and a half ago, so I'm very glad to get this, it's... Dark Souls meets Metroidvania. It's pretty good. I fought the first boss, not counting the the boss that kills you at the beginning, which I'm assuming you could kill if you have epic skills. Um, takes a little getting used to the dodging in a 2D sense without, you know, being a 3D environment. But uh, still stuff the lawn in it. Uh, this does not have online, but it does have local co-op. So um, I I have liked what I've played so far. And I have wondered, like, eternally what this thing on the front was. It's actually the first wheel boss of the game. So <laughs> in case you've always looked at the artwork and just be like, that looks nothing like any of the play okay with those. So. Then this is a music game that Limited Ones did. I don't know anything about this. It's a music game. I don't even know what it visually looks like. If it's like Oidon, uh, the Project C the Project Diva series. I'm not sure how it works. Um, and it even boasts free music updates. Download free music updates forever. Stay tuned with constant new updates without any further purchases. So that's a pretty oppressive... Um, claim now. Um, I've been wanting to try this one out too. I might do that on a random stream maybe. So um, I don't know. This is a Japanese game if I recall. So I think I'll like the music. I like a lot of Japanese music so I will probably like that. Uh, the very first release of a German translated version of Salt and Sanctuary was translated hilariously badly. Well that's not very good in a game with a lot of uh, with a lot of flavor text attached to the equipment, so that probably isn't good. So let's see, we got some Play Asia, and then we got the last normal. So Nini Kuni 2, this is called the um, Premium Edition. Now, this was 1999, I believe. I believe it originally retailed for like eighty dollars. I can't remember. So this comes with a steel book edition, but what I found weird, and it comes up with this like um, I think it's like a three D pop up model you can put together. I think, but what's strange is you get a normal copy version and an empty steel book, and you do get a music disc that's all the way in the steel book. And let me show off the steel book because. You know, we all like uh, nice artwork, so let's play some nice artwork on there. Very nice and reflective and shiny. But I thought it was odd that you get a steel book in a normal PS4 case. I thought that was kind of weird, but got that super cheap, so I can't really complain much. Um, I've only played the DS Nini Kuni game, oddly enough, out of 
even though I own the PS3 version too. I actually technically own two versions of the PS3 version. If you ever watched my old convention videos of how I got the English physical, I got the Japanese and English version of that physical hard book with all the spells and shit. And I, I still very glad I got that book, but still it was weird. But um, yeah, I got that for like it was nineteen ninety nine, so that was really cheap. It comes with a little DLC. Just a bit. Let's see. They used Google Translate to do the job. That's a terrible idea. I mean, you could use Google Translate to get like a basic idea of what might be getting said. But you have to use a little of your noggin to kind of get through the... Um, you know, if you go from Japanese to English, from the English. You have to use your noggin a little to... Kind of, it's like, oh, I think I know what it means here. You can't just take it for a fact. It's like, oh, by money or to um, at the translates wobble ducky, wobble ducky, up my balky, <laughs> You know, it's like, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> it's like, you can get some really funky, sometimes you can get some accurate translation, sometimes you get some kind of funky, weird middle words in some things. Uh, we're discounted pretty heavily. Um, I'm not sure how well Nini Kuni 2 sold. Uh, from what I understand, the first game sold pretty well, so I'm not sure about the second game. I haven't heard about any numbers. Um, I do remember there was a lot of controversy over the limited edition for the first game, though. That's why I was surprised when I went last time went to New York Comic Con, and the Namco booth had loose copies of the book, but they were only selling them with the game, which is why I own two copies of Nini Kuni 1. I own a black label in the Grace Hits version, which is what came with the book at the Comic-Con. So, I I think I think together it was thirty nine ninety nine, and I bought the original game brand new full price, so I paid a little to get that damn book, but, um, the reason I really wanted that book is because I own the DS game, and you need the book to play the DS game. So I actually have a significant advantage having an English book to use with the Japanese game. So that's actually going to be something useful if I ever sit down and play the damn DS game. Oh, but sadly the DS game is the one I've played the most of, um... Even though for like half the game, the DS game and the PS3 game are mostly similar. And then there's a point where the bad guy shows up. And the bad guy is completely different in both versions. And I don't know if there's like any meaning behind that. Or split timelines. Or just one's not considered canon. I'm not really sure how that works with them. But, um... I I believe there was a limited, a more expensive limited edition for Nini Kuni 2. So this was like a middle ground version. So I don't know. I I feel like in the West, it I don't see it too much with Japanese games, but with Western collectors editions, they they seem to always print way too many copies. But yeah, that occasionally happens with um, Japanese games. And you saw the link I sent you on Discord uh, this morning, too. And um, that that's good. That that was 149 for 59 So, and I hadn't gotten that game yet. So, I thought that was a good deal. You'll see that probably in the next pickup. That's the secret Dennis knows. Okay, so, like I said, I got three Play Asia games here. So... This might be one of the last uh, the, one of the last Vita games they might do, perhaps. See, I have the Nini Kuni 2 Kong's Edition. It's massive with a vinyl and a big up King's Vision. <laughs> I was I was gonna be like Kong Vision. It's like the DK Crew uh, DLC for it. <laughs> so I don't know. This might be one of the last Vita releases, maybe. At some point, the Vita games are going to stop because Japan's supposed to be stopping their production next year. So, at some point, it's going to stop here. So, this is called Stay. It might be kind of hard to see because the title's like gray. 
But uh, this is copy 700, 506, which I believe there was only 2,000 of these made, and it sold. Um, there's a few of the Play Asia games have sold fast. Most others have lingered for several months, but Stray and that Ghouls and Goblin type game and Epic, those sold out like immediately. So, um, I'm glad to have this. I hear it's an interesting game, but it's mostly a story type game. I'm not really sure. Um, since I heard um, this is the kind of game you don't want spoilers for, I, I have not watched any of it. So, besides the marketing detail of screenshots, I've seen nothing of this game. So, I don't know anything about the besides the base concept of, well, you're supposed to be like a computer with like an opportunity to save someone or something. Uh, damn auto collection. Yes, I've had that problem uh, when I joined a stream of uh, Carter's um, on Tuesday after work. I was using the the uh, Google voice command thing, and you know, me and Google trying to recognize anything I'm trying to say. <laughs> Let's see, Deathmark and the VM may also be one of the last. Now I got the PS4, uh, the PS4 version of Deathmark. See, um, I'm pretty sure the normal releases are going to stop before the limited releases. Because the limited releases are willing to work with the Japanese storefront. Well, it doesn't look like any of the normal publishers going through normal storefronts are not going to work with the Japanese factory, which is supposed to close down sometime early next year, so not that there's much time to really work with them either. Uh, we always seen the Persona dancing games did not make the deadline to get a physical version. The, um, the Blind Prince and the... What is it? The Lyle Princess and the Blind Prince didn't make the physical release deadline. That one's kind of a shame because a lot of the... A lot of those NIS survival horror games with a little goal have all been on the Vita, so that one's kind of a shame. It is on the Switch, though. I got the PS4 version of that uh, pre-ordered. Uh, looks very good. I'm excited for that one. I hope it turns better than that Woes game. That Woes game was kind of more of a mixed bag. I liked all those other ones they've done, though. Uh, that Fairy Light one was a really good one. That last section for the true... No, no, it's for the forced ending. The forced ending last section sucks for that game, though. Um, I'm actually glad Summon Night 6 got a normal release so other people could buy that. Um, the beautiful 76-page manual. Yes, it had a thick manual. So, so let's go ahead and take a look. I know the last two releases I didn't look at, but let's go ahead and look at these ones. I'm kind of curious to see what the what we got in here. So, let's see. Oh yeah, I forgot. They all covered in a very thin thing of plastic. Get a knife on now. Yep. I just do that to bother more of my co-workers. <laughs> They're just like, "Damn, Josh! I can't believe you you're willing to flare that knife all over the place." I think the thing is, you're not seeing the, like, I mean, like, heel, it's, like, about an arm's length from me, but, like, to you all, it looks like it's, like, on my nose, like it is right now. So, I, I mean, I think it's a little hard to tell the depth, maybe. <laughs> but, I don't know, I just, I think he's exaggerating. <laughs> I hate when the plastic is so close, though. And you can't snag a pinch of it. Come on. There we go. But, yeah, I just do that at the bottle while my co walkers. Because <laughs> they'll usually take a peek and try to find something to make fun of. So, they make these Vita ones so compact. I really like trying to open these and not bend the flap. Ah, there, I got that one inside. But they 
stuff is in so much. So, looks like we got the game, of course. Anyone who makes a limited or a special edition or what? If you make a thing of a game and it doesn't have the game in it, you should be thrown down a pit. <laughs> so, we got the game here. Title again might be kind of hard. It's kind of dark of that. Stay in a conven uh, conservational venture where we chat with... With... Creon? Creon? Queen, who has been locked in a dark room where there is nothing but a computer. 24 chapter story with multiple branches and 7 different endings. Interact interactive dialogue with flexible emotional bonds. Dozens of unlockable locations and items. Mini games, puzzles, and custom machines. Pixel art visuals. And I think it might actually have a book. It actually feels kind of hefty. So I'm actually going to open up the game because when the Vita Force came out, um, Japanese games still had some booklets. But over time, they've even dropped them for the Vita, which, considering the price um, of sales. But I think this might actually have a booklet. Yes, it actually does, and it's actually pretty... Pretty fatty fat with 47 pages. Pretty nice, and it's in color, shows color pictures and that, so it's pretty nice. Do not see a lot of Vita games with no booklets, so definitely a nice. Then we have a soundtrack. And a number card. I don't know why they really do these number cards. They came with all of PlayAsia's releases. So, it was only 1,300 copies. So, wow, that was even less. Old. Also, has this kind of trippy back. Uh, that kind of reminds me of something, but I can't put my finger on it. And that, sadly, looks like that's all it is. A color version of that same artwork. And this has 10 tracks on it. So... Probably a pretty short story adventure type game. So, nothing too mind blowing. But hey, you don't have a lot of limited Vita game releases, so I'll take a get. So, we got here Fall of Light Darkest Edition. Now, when I look at these pictures, it's a top down view, so I would assume it's probably going to be a gauntlet style game since it looks like a medieval setting. Yeah. I don't know anything about this particular game. I got copy 398 though, so I got a pretty low end copy. And that one we snagged right off the bat. Oh no, I stabbed my nose off! So, there's the nice glossy case though. You can see the title at least better on that one, but you know, now you can't really see the, the hero character there. Fall of Light is a story-driven action RPG set in a world consumed by darkness where, old warrior uh, where an old warrior takes his daughter to see the last remnants of sunlight. Hmm. Oh, I hope it's not like a gauntlet-style escort game. That would probably be terrible. <laughs> Doing an escort game is usually a nightmare. <laughs> so where are we going here? So, of course, we have... This one was, like I said, 398 out of 2,000. So this one had a bit of a big old point one. Um, disappointing here. We have a just a disc in a papal sleeve. So that's supposed to be the soundtrack. Apparently it has vocals for the opening song, though. But it looks like we do get a big fat booklet. And holy crap, there's a lot of text in there. Like, just big fat wad pages of text. So what is this? Role playing game by Woundheads. Let's see, introduction, how to use this book. 
How do you use this book? What do you mean, tell stories? How do we do it? A world without Lucy? Kill the question. What, is this book actually part of the game? I don't know anything about this game, so... Let's see, for an entire decade, a battle torn about the unknown world until the darkness infected everything. Hmm. I'm kind of curious. I might have to look more into this. 20 different battle uh, stances, including two-handed, dual-wielding, 10 weapon classes, guide and protect your companion. So yeah, it's um, it's an escort type game. Fight shadow soldiers in darkness. So, sounds kind of interesting. So, I don't know anything about Fall Light. Might actually look that in. But, kind of... Kind of a shame it doesn't come with a normal uh, soundtrack disc like all those. So now this is the forced, um, I believe this is the forced Play Asia Switch limited one, uh, limited edition they did. So this is a shmup bullet hell type game. This is number 492 being butcherly opened. You know, I, I imagine somebody probably watches me open these and just like <gasps> and just fall back having a heart attack or something. I I just don't get why somebody would buy a game and not fucking play it. I mean if you buy two versions and not open one, I can get that logic, but I just don't get why you wouldn't open the game to play it. It's like that concept will always be strange and foreign to me. Come on. This one's very wide. Come on, get out of Yeah. Sadly, it looks like I'll have to do the middle bend. I hate doing that, but... Yeah. What's this? It's like a very soft... Oh my goodness, I didn't realize... It's a steel book. I've never seen a steel book switch game. So, oh, did they do the same thing? Well, there's a normal case in here too. Yes, they did. There's a normal case and a steel book. Is that like some new thing some collectors editions are doing? So, so there is a. Let's see, is a. Yeah. So, got a number card. This was out of 3,000 copies, 492. It looks like that's everything inside. So, it looks like no soundtrack, but you do get a booklet. And I'm not even sure how to pronounce. Does it look like at the side? Wanks? Wanks? Wank? R-X-N dash Wegeen. Wegeen. It might be kind of hard to see. Because I, I can barely make out the actual logo of it. So, I don't know anything about this particular title. Uh, this is a 48-page book. Uh, looks like it mostly has artwork in it. Let's see. Yeah, I got some killer artwork. So, yeah, it's mostly artwork in that. So, it's not a guidebook that... Um, I am curious, let's see, we're do a wide thing of the limited, uh, the steel case. So, I've never seen a Switch steel case booklet, so that's actually interesting to see. Very nice looking. So, it's so thin, though. It's so much thinner than the actual normal steel case, though. So, I, I want to see if it came with a booklet. So... I mean, I don't personally mind, because um, this way it gives me a free replacement case, essentially. So, I don't really mind too much, but it just to, it seems to, considering how cheap companies keep trying to complain about bottom lines and that, and it, it does have a manual. This is probably the third s Switch game that's had a manual. Holy crap. Look at those. Woo. <laughs> Uh, it is a very small booklet, if you want to compare it to a hand. Um, it is... It does not have a page counter. So, looks like about... 
how like seven pages that it is in full color but it's not too much in there but it is full color it looks like it covers the basics it is a very small book though it's very small it's like even smaller than the NES case uh, did the PSP ever get steel books I believe not not that I know of I've never heard of a steel book for a PSP game so so that's that's pretty interesting that is very nice it's very slick so uh, definitely like the artwork like I said this is supposed to be a shmup game it's either a shmup bullet hell or a combination of the two Somewhere in that category. These limited companies doing it. Play Asia. Play Asia strictly limited and limited one games have did so many shmup bullet hell games. It's getting ridiculous. So that explains because when I first open it, I see I see this plastic bag. I'm like, why is there a plastic bag in here? And I tug on it. I'm like, holy shit. So that that's actually nice. I don't remember. If I did, I forgot about coming with one so that's very nice again I don't know why I don't know why if, if you know why they're sending a steel book an empty steel book with a normal case version I would love to know because I, I find that such strange that's very odd but yes um, I'm not aware of the PSP getting any kind of a steel book type thing so not a I don't know of any bizarre cases of any kind that the PSP had, at least in America. There, there's probably a good chance Japan may have had something bizarre, but as far as I'm aware, I'm not aware of anything in America. So, man, they really did not offer a lot of space for that, so I have to put those together. But that should be everything except for that one VR game, which I guess since this is the end, I can go and see if I can find where I sat that. I said it somewhere around here. Where the hell is it, though? Uh, not sure where the hell it is. <sighs> Crap. I don't know where it is. Unless I showed. No, because I had the other stuff here. So, ah, there it is, actually. There it is. It's on my little lowly computer disk. So, this was the other thing I got at Walmart. This was the other thing I got. It was Heavy File Red Shadow. It was like $19 at Walmart. Um, the VR is a mode. You don't have to have VR, but um, I like a lot of VR games on the PS4, so... So, I got that with that... Uh, Ten free dollars thing of that, so that should be everything. And well, to do that anyway, <laughs> but yeah, I have to say, um, I'm definitely actually like because I'm not a big shmup type person, so I, I of course wasn't really too, but but I have to say this this steel book that came with it, very nice. So I I do remember limited one games, um. Switch version of the game they personally made the um was it um Sunday Sunday night RPG or something like that or Saturday night RPG what was it? it it was something like that um it starts off like an okay game but it gets very monotonous later on they they pulled it to the Switch and it got like this gigantic limited edition that like comes with like action figure and that and it gets a steel book i think that's the full steel book i really saw for any switch games i did not buy that i own a vita version of that game so um well i wouldn't say it's the worst thing in the face of the planet it wasn't something i'd say go scream down the halls of valhalla trying to look for so Plus, you can get that deal on free on PC, too, so... Uh, even though it's probably being scalped like hell, because it was, like, their second release? Yeah, because that one... That one top-down, door kicker style game was the first game they did, and then they did that. I think it's, like, Sunday... Saturday... Saturday Hero RPG? I can't remember. Anyway... That's everything that I have today. So, 
that's Black Friday in that. Um, there were two other things I got for Black Friday. It was Undertale for the Switch that was a little cheaper. And that Starlink, I think it's called Starlink, um, for $39 for the Switch. Uh, I bought those for Waiko, for little Waiko, my nephew. Because he got a Switch for his birthday this year. So that will give him some Switch stuff to play. So uh, I did get those. I could I could be a terrible uncle and play the Undertale version on the Switch and just to play the unique boss, but I, I've seen it. It's nothing like. I mean, it's cool if you own the Switch version, but uh, I wouldn't say it's worth running down to buy the Switch version just to. Uh, yes, it is very expensive compared to the PC price. The PC price is nine ninety nine, which is a fantastic price for the game. Um, while I would still buy it for that, vo like, I bought the PS3 version. I bought the special one that came with the music box. I don't regret buying that version at all. Even though it was overpriced buying it all, I think the music box justified the price for me. Um, I owned the PC version originally, which a lot of the fourth wall breaks are much nicer on the PC version than they are in the console version, because most of them were obviously removed. Because they wouldn't work on console properly. Um, if you have a Switch and you don't have it in any capacity, I would probably go with the Switch version because it has all the content. It has everything. Well, you could argue it has one thing gone. The PS4 version made this bizarre dog shrine that you can pay money to upgrade with goofy stuff. You get a destroyed version of the Dog Shrine that leads to the new boss, a uh, new side enemy boss that's in the Switch version. So I guess technically you don't get the experience, the Dog Shrine thing, but uh, I don't think that's a big loss. That's just kind of a goofy side thing in the PS4 version. Um, but yeah, I would probably recommend the Switch version if you don't have any version of Undertale. But yes, it is. We'll play, let's see, I think it's twenty nine ninety nine full price. And I got the version for Wyco for, I think, for Black Friday. It was just like 24 So it wasn't like a giant discount, but it was a few dollars. So I was like, I, I wanted to give him that because I, I think that would have been a nice game for him. Uh, at least enjoy the music uh, until he gets better at it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, 30 bucks for Undertale. Unless you literally do everything and you're interested in fighting Sands and Undyne and Genocide 1, just doing a normal Spare Everyone one's not a very lengthy game. You probably, unless you talk and examine everything and draw out the game as long as possible, um, no, an average playthrough would probably be just four or five hours. So, it's still a great game though. Like, it's not the world-breaking, God-descending, Jesus-on-the-world kind of thing that a lot of people like to make it out to be. But it is a good game. I liked it. The music's awesome. So I definitely look forward to Delta Wound because I, I really like the new three-party system. I think it's going to bring a lot more interesting mechanics into the combat. So, And the music still continues to be awesome. So I'm looking forward to that. So... Uh, but, you know, Delta Wound is the future, sadly. But, um, yeah. If you see it for a good price, I'd get it. Um, I'm not sure it might have a good used price. Sadly, as far as I'm aware of, the Switch version is the only version you can get outside a fan game or when it comes to the physical releases. I'm pretty sure to get the PS4 version is only through fan game. Or, and if you want the Music Box Edition of the Switch version, you have to go through Fan Game. But the standard Switch version, I believe, is the only version that's available at other stores. So, But, yeah, I mean, if you got the money, I, I'd say get it. But um, I understand the argument of it being expensive. It is a short game. Ten bucks is a really good price on the PC, though. And it gets a lot of discounts on PC. But the Switch version has... The X boss while the PS4 has the dog shrine thing. So I, I definitely think the Switch version is the better version. Plus it has an NPC that actually hinted at Delta Wound being dropped. So that was 
interesting too. Anyway, 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 I'm just rambling on now. So those will everything that. So next time I'll have my next order of uh, Pink Gorilla, which, like I said, was just this Friday. Um, sadly, I only got two items at a time, but uh, one of them is a very good item I got for a very excellent price, which I believe usually goes for much higher than I bought from him. So I'm really excited about that. And another one's actually one I've actually bought when I went to visit Matt. And I had, I've told this story before about this game. I'll save it for that video. But that's everything. And then, um,. Anything new with the channel? I know I haven't really done any reviews for a while or anything. Um, I've been like having a few ideas, kind of wish washing in my head, and doing a lot of my streams, getting a lot of my playthroughs caught up. So hopefully today, I'm hoping to get a few together. I got one I want to do on Milgear Survive, and technically not a review of Fallout 76 because I have a kind of a moral ground of wanting to beat games before I review them. I'm, I've made like maybe one, one or two exceptions in that. Um, but I am someone who thinks if you didn't beat the game, you don't really have the full picture to review it. So that's just my subjective opinion in that regard. But I'm going to try and get a few review things done today while getting a few chores. Because, uh, like I said, I am not working tomorrow on Monday. I have every Monday in December off. So uh, I will probably do a little live streaming maybe late tonight and maybe a little tomorrow. So that will be a little different than what I usually do. Um, but anyway... I'm going to get going. Thank you for joining today at the Proving Grounds in the Treasure Room where we have treasures and troves and way too many fucking games I haven't even freaking played. And you don't know how much of a nightmare it is keeping this stuff organized. I, I have rearranged it three times. Oops, sorry. I have rearranged it three times trying to maximize room. So... Um, I'm trying to do a little more with some shelves over here, too, so. <laughs> I'll see ya, Dan. So, so, we're gonna take the Doomsday device, the laser of doom, and we're going to get this going. But, anyway, thank you for joining, and until next time, hopefully I'll get my lazy ass off and get some reviews here on the main channel that's been, like, dead. So, anyway, thank you. Have a delightful day.